everybody welcome to the road to world football show the regular season is over the playoffs are here there are two games on nbc this weekend both in prime time yeah. saturday night it's the jaguars and the chargers sunday night the Bengals and ravens and i'm here i'm patrick darty and i'm here with denny carter we're gonna do something a little different today we're going to rank the playoff teams uh kind of just simulating the postseason our nbc bosses don't want us to do this because now we're basically going to reveal the results of the playoffs um, so yeah, right. there's no, no real need to watch this. But we, we won't be silenced. And uh, we were told, do not rank these playoff teams and give away the predetermined outcomes <laughs> of the games. And we said, no, we must. The public has to know. They have to know. It's just a matter of integrity. And we believe legal is on our side. Uh, <laughs> this may be shock, longtime listeners of the show. Denny and I have actually, we've agreed to pause our ongoing litigation against each other. That's right. We're now pooling our, our litigation budgets we have to, uh, to, really, to defend our right to reveal the results of the playoffs. But first, Denny, we got to reveal the results of the draft. Uh, after a little snafu by the Houston Texans, the Chicago Bears now have the number one pick. And we've, we've gotten a preview of what the hell our lives is going to be uh, yeah. for the next four months. Because now Twitter has become solely a service to debate if the Bears should trade Justin Fields and draft a quarterback, say, Alabama's Bryce Young with the number one pick. Are you even entertaining the possibility that this is something they might do? Look, uh, probably not. But GM Ryan Poles said in, in, in one breath, he said, yes, Justin Fields is our starter. I'm excited about going into the future with Justin Fields as the starting quarterback for the Bears, okay? And then in the next breath said, I would take a quarterback if I were absolutely blown away. Now, I know he has to say certain things. Like, you, know, you can't expect the GM to, to come out and say, we are not taking a quarterback, no matter what. You, he can't say that. I think there are better ways to use that language to, to sort of obscure obscure what you may These or may not do. such crazy language. But, but, I mean, he said what he said. I know folks are mad. We, we have a blurb on it. Folks are mad. No, no, he didn't say that. He did say that. He said, if I were blown away. So, what <laughs> will he stick with Justin Fields? I believe so. But I don't think it's 100%. My guess is, uh, this is really like the dictionary definition of the word guess is my guess is they told Justin Fields behind the scenes, like, listen, we got to say some stuff publicly to maximize our trade leverage, the number one overall pick. We're not going to trade you. You are you are our guy. Uh, I, I think maybe some variation of that talk has probably occurred. And I just think even if they secretly want to, uh, there's just no way they're going to trade. The, the Chicago Bears have been trying to draft a quarterback with any certifiable NFL traits for the entirety of the draft. Like since the draft has existed, right. the Bears have never successfully drafted a franchise quarterback. And now they finally have one who has put some limitations on film and definitely has some concerns about his game, but has put some special traits on film. Like I just don't think, I don't think they could handle the fan backlash and people think like teams don't make decisions based on that kind of thing. Like they absolutely do. Yeah. Like they do not want that smoke. I mean, Justin Fields is already the greatest bears quarterback of all time. He is. He's definitely the greatest quarterback they've drafted. Um, like, cause again, he actually has some certifiable NFL traits and the, we can debate the passing game limitations. Cause uh, <laughs> didn't really have much success throwing the yeah. whole football this year. No, they didn't. But then and, and, look at the receiver court. Right. And then polls poll said, uh, Justin has to improve as a passer. It's true. I mean, he was 28th in completion rate over expected, not exactly accurate, especially on like short, short area. I can't throws. believe he hasn't been better throwing to the, the second best receiver in the NFL with the last name of St. Brown. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, you know, but the fact that Byron Pringle and Velas Jones were seeing Dante significant Pettis. snaps down the down the uh, yeah Dante Pettis Dante Pettis was like they're basically the de facto wide receiver one for for three or four weeks I mean you know that that's inexcusable as far as like personnel team building goes I actually think you know polls talks a lot about team building and building blocks and this honestly I don't think it needs to be this hard the Bears are making it really hard on themselves not now th that could change this offseason they have a lot of money to spend um, they could be this this year's Jags and just go out and outbid everybody on every mediocre free agent. And that, that could work out. I hope they, they do. But you cannot go into next season without completely clearing out the pass catching corpse outside of Chase Claypool and uh, Darnell Mooney. Yeah, no, I mean, and Cole Komet gets to stay too. And, right? I, I, yeah, Komet, yes. They, they, need, they need to find their Christian Kirk. 
I mean, I mean every franchise needs it. Every, uh, every GM is just turning over every stone. Like, where's the next Christian Kirk? Please get me the next Christian Kirk on the phone. And... I, I mean, uh, look, Christian Kirk had a, had a, had a fine season. Did he, you know, did he blow away uh, doubters? I don't think so. I mean, Zay Jones basically was the wide receiver one for the final month and a half of the season. But I mean, Christian Kirk on the Bears would be Jerry Rice. He would. Yeah, they they just they they have they do they have so much money to spend. The free agent receiver market is yeah, it's not not the best. No, it's uh, not. Michael um, Thomas, Nelson Aguilar, DJ Shark, Marvin Jones. I'm mean, all like the expensive players. Juju Smith Schuster, mm-hmm. Sterling Shepard. Uh, hoping to get to some good players here. Shark, um, shark, shark makes sense. I think shark would make a lot of sense for the Bears. Hey, Mikkel Hardman, Paris Campbell. Wow, guard. Uh, oof. Yeah, might need to use some draft picks on some receivers. Uh, yeah, but and there and there are several really good ones. <laughs> there are uh, one of whom, uh, the guy on TCU, could not complete a deep ball to to save his life on Monday yeah. night. I don't know if that TCU guy is draft eligible yet. I think he is. Who? Um, oh, the uh, the receiver. Yeah, the receiver guy whose name that I know. Um, Quentin. Quentin Johnson. Quentin Johnson. Uh, that's, it just came to me. No one talked. Yeah, Quentin Johnson. Chat. Yeah, he's he's extremely good, and he would instantly be the best receivers uh, Bears receiver of all time. I just think that yeah, even if they want to do it, I just think there's no way. I just think there's no way, and they they're gonna try to. They're for better or worse, they're gonna be. St- I think for better, you got to just see what happens here with Justin Fields. Um, and yeah, so anyways, the Bears did not make the playoffs. Uh, in fact, they were the worst team in football. <laughs> they lost uh, 14 of their last 15 games. Yeah, which some people, tw- uh, poor Greg yeah. Gabriel, he <laughs> tweeted, what, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to lose 13 of the last 14 games. <laughs> yes, actually, I did I, I did remember that. That sparked the memory of September when they won two games. And they were like, well, this run heavy thing is, is working. We're going to continue to have a 75% run rate every game because that was before they even let Justin Fields run. They, right. Because you can't, you can't lose like this because the stat goes, if you have 30 carries in a game, you win. Right. And, and so, you know, the NFL team has never lost a game where they had at least 30. And, carries. and, and, and well, the NFL games are called the refs step in, they call it after th- <laughs> the, the 30th carry. It doesn't matter what the score is. Oh, no, it's over. It's over. The bears win. <laughs> so uh, bears did not make the playoffs. 14 teams did. If you're listening to the show, you're probably well familiar with the field at this point. Denny and I, we're going to try to rank them 14 to one. Just to, I don't even know, like, for like, I don't think we're doing like most likely to like win the Super Bowl or whatever. We're just doing who we think the 14 best teams are. We're going to start at 14, Denny. Who yeah. do you think is the weakest team in this playoff field? The 14, a, a, a field in which there are unfortunately many weak teams. Right. There are. Uh, I, I have to, you got to hand it to the Dolphins uh, for being the worst team in the postseason. <laughs> I actually kind of get it as a lo- former longtime Dolphins fan. I used to, I used to beg and plead for my Dolphins to make the postseason, knowing full well that they would have their heads ripped off in the, in the wild card round. Or if they mad, you know, uh, somehow miraculously got through that round, they would, they would be crushed in the, in the second round. This that's what's happening. That's here. what happened I, when they lost sixty-two to seven. How can, yeah, look, dude? How how can you how can you be happy as a Dolphins fan going into this game? You are going to get thrashed, humiliated in every way. I, I don't know. Let's well, if Tua Tagovailoa does not get cleared. Even if Tua gets cleared, what well, they're going to be eight or nine point underdogs, maybe still even ten point underdogs. But they did beat the Bills with Tua Tagovailoa. They've had a lot of injury issues since then, though. And yeah, I, I was. I had my antenna up, like, yeah, making Joe like, oh, I bet Tua mysteriously gets cleared this week and has not mysteriously been cleared yet this week. And they're trying to keep expectations really low that Tua is coming back. And they do, I mean, famous last words, they, they have no prayer in this game without Tua Tag. But even with Tua, uh, very long shot. Uh, their offensive line is this like injury oblivion. Yes, right so now. many offensive line injuries. I mean, their the, uh, Pro Football Focus grades the Dolphins as the second worst pass blocking uh, unit in the in, in the NFL. The the Bills have a pretty good pass rush. I mean, whoever is at quarterback for Miami is going to have to drop back a lot in this game and is going to be under pressure constantly. I think they had an off the street left tackle in week 18 who then got carded. Sorry if I'm making this up, but they have had just carnage on their offensive line. 
And yeah, the, no point in even like debating the outcome of this game if Tua Tagovailoa does not play. If he does play, I mean, you get the Bills have been a, like a little shaky yeah, the f- yeah. past two months where they they keep like letting teams hang around. If Tua plays, they hurt. They hit some early big plays to Tyree Kill, uh, Jalen Wilds, and they get they have like a ten or fourteen point first quarter. Then maybe it'll be a game, but uh just you have to tell tall tales basically to concoct scenarios where the dolphins are winning this game dolphins are gonna have to let it loose cut it loose uh to to have a chance in this game it's not they're not gonna be able to like p- you know pick apart this bill's defense you're gonna have to have huge plays and they can't even pivot to the run because raheem mostert has a like broken thumb i think yeah, or, right. so it's just uh down bad Denise believe i believe what we would have said three months ago before we Stop moving on because that's what we do with our bits. We recycle them. Uh, we beat them to death till they're dead, <laughs> and then we move on. Um, this team was not originally my 14th team in the field. They were my 12th. I have moved them down to 14 now because it doesn't appear Lamar Jackson is going to play in the playoffs. And if Lamar Jackson does not play, I uh, frankly, I guess maybe you could say they have a better shot than a Tua Tagovailoa's less Dolphins, who I would say are the 14th team in the field if he does not play. I think two has more of a chance of playing than Lamar at this point, uh, who hasn't practiced in over a month. They seem him, he and the team seem at loggerheads with each other. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on there, but it seems like drama is kind of slowly starting to spill into public view. And, and if Lamar Jackson does not play, it's just kind of like, what do you do here? Baltimore Ravens, you know, cause like Tyler Huntley even going to play, I guess he'll play. I guess he's healthy. I guess. Uh, I mean, I think they were being very careful with him last week. Um, and that I, I, I do think he will play. I don't think Lamar has a chance though. No, it doesn't seem like he has a chance. And I mean, I guess maybe I'm already undermining my whole, maybe they have a better, like if a game goes perfect for the Ravens and dolphins, who do you think has a better chance of winning their game? Uh, dolphins yeah yeah uh, so, I, I don't i don't even i don't even know how i guess i guess for the ravens it would just be turnovers it would be sacks it would be just completely snuffing out the Bengals passing attack they'd have to sack joe burrow six or seven times yeah yeah that wouldn't have to be what it, and so the ravens are just kind of they're like a classic 17 game season team like uh maybe the season didn't need to be this long and have our team get so injury ruined that by the time the playoffs get here we do not look like a playoff team so the, the Ravens are my weakest team in the field. Denny Carter, who is your second weakest yeah. team in the field? Uh, I had the Ravens. Uh, the so, uh, then who who's your third then? Yep, uh, C- Seahawks. Uh, third third weakest team. I, look, I, I'm a longtime Geno Smith truther and defender, as as everyone knows. But Geno has kind of been Geno over the past well since since about week eleven. If you're looking at the box scores which of course this is what i do um you know the game. please if you admit on the record that you've watched a game it's gonna be big problems with the lawyers cause... i will never watch a game uh, i don't even know how to uh just like i've not, i don't know you don't know how to watch an out-of-market game i will say that <laughs> i'm sorry i do so gina smith uh 20th in epa per play since week 11 we're talking like the mac jones desmond ritter region of the epa situation it's not good it's not good for gino and again look against i mean i know we're not basing it strictly on matchup but whew, this is a bad matchup for gino smith against a, a a turnover happy well uh i should say opportunistic that's what we call them uh 49ers defense that should pressure him uh and when he is pressured gino has not been good no, Gino, he he's just he's the classic front running quarterback, and even that's a skill. I mean, a lot of quarterbacks you give them a lead uh, are not good. Gino Smith, when the Seahawks can get out of like super predictable passing situations, is a really good quarterback still, and like he can make amazing throws. His touchdown throw, uh, I forget who it was to in Week 18. He threw an absolute seed into the end zone. I believe to Tyler Lockett. Lockett, yeah, it's Lockett. a total seed, and like he can make. So Gino, he checks some boxes where he can play well from ahead. He can make big plays. Like he can create some instant offense. Like he has like some instant offense ability, which a lot of quarterbacks just don't have. But when Gino is forced to play from behind at all, it's just a sackathon. You know, his pocket awareness has just never been great. He takes so many sacks where he like never feels the rusher coming, and he's just not built to play from behind. 
And like the Seahawks are probably going to be playing from behind pretty early on in this game against the 49ers. And the Seahawks, like it's a little tough to rank them so low because I feel like if you're trying to concoct like scenarios, like how does this team win a playoff game? The Seahawks are playing a team starting a seventh round rookie and Brock Purdy has not been exposed yet. He's playing one of the most experienced football coaches in the entire United States of America and Pete Carroll uh, Pete Carroll has kind of had Kyle Shanahan's number. Like they could have some really interesting stuff to throw at Brock Purdy and make this a closer game than we're expecting. But that is not the way the season has been trending for either of these teams. Right. I, I, and I think, you know, getting back to Gino for, for a minute, I, I really think he is the, the key here. Uh, and, and the reason why the Seahawks look so weak headed into the postseason, into the wild card, wild card round. So um, I think the the Seahawks are aware that Gino is regressing to to Gino uh, a, a, of late because they have really leaned on the run over the past three weeks uh, and talked openly about like we need to establish it and this is not what they were doing when Gino was I guess cooking uh, earlier in the season they were like hey this is fun like we can keep doing this it's working. Um, now it's not, and they're trying to re- revert to that old formula that they use with, with Russell Wilson. That's not going to work. It's not going to work against 49ers. I did kind of forget that they only lost 21 to 13 to the 49ers and Brock Purdy in week 15. Um, yeah, you know, it was not close though. They were down 21 to three in the third quarter. Oh yeah, no, it was kind of, that's right. Yeah. It was that garbage time touchdown from Noah Fant that made it even appear close. It was not a close game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the night, yeah, the, the, the Seahawks, they overachieved this year, but yeah, it's like, I feel like it's been the classic, this overachieving team got in the playoffs and then just gets absolutely hammered. So my 14, 13, 12 was the Ravens and Seahawks, or excuse me, my 12th has not been revealed yet. Who are your 14, 13, 12, Denny? Uh, so I have uh, Dolphins, 14, Ravens, 13, Seahawks, 12. 12, which brings me to my 12th then Craig Dennis Carter. Sorry, I should not say your legal name on the air. Uh, you've got some weird fans out there. We can edit it out. Uh, we can edit that out. Uh, the New York football giants, Denny, uh, who are not a horrible team, but you're talking about like an overachieving team. That's kind of like, Oh, what do you do here in the playoffs yeah. where like they get by on offense, like Brian Dable, that's like kind of figure stuff out on a weekly basis. They're 16th and point differential. They're 15th and points per game. Somehow ninth in offensive EPA per play, but defensive EPA per play, they're 28th. They're 20th against the pass, 30th against the run. I mean, I guess anyone can beat the Se- uh, the, the Vikings on any given Sunday, but the Giants, like, there's no playoff upside for this team. They don't have playmakers on offense. Their defense is just weak, especially by playoff standards. It's a weak defense. And, like, if you're going to, like, flip a playoff matchup, like, win a game in an upset – you're going to need big playmakers making big plays, or you're going to need defense to stifling somebody. And I don't think the Giants have the recipe to do either of those. I I, I'm, I tend to be more positive on on the Giants, and I say this as someone who has fought Giants Twitter many times uh, online. But but I'm 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 in I'm in on Brian Dable. Like I I I trust that he will do. He's a weapon. He is a weapon. To have do what it takes to 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 win. Uh, if that means letting Daniel Jones off, you know, off the leash a little bit, then he will do that. He did that against the Vikings a few weeks ago where Daniel Jones dropped back a lot. I don't have the numbers who, who in front won of me. That, who won that game? Hopefully the Vikings won. <laughs> uh, when I was talking about how the, I don't expect the Giants to beat the Vikings. Do we well, remember who won that game, Denny? Um, um, I, I, I just people are looking into it. The Giants lost 27 to 24 on Christmas. It was, Eve. It was a good back and forth. Game. That's right. I forgot about that. Uh, Clearly. But, but you have, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and I think he, Brian Dable attacks defenses in ways that make sense. He, he's not, he's not stubborn. He's not just going to run Saquon Barkley off left tackle 25 times. Like if, if it takes Daniel Jones dropping back and throwing it, not necessarily deep, he, ne- he never throws deep. He has no. one of the, the lowest deep ball rates in the whole, his entire year. career. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and this is not, this is not uh, abnormal. Okay. But for him anyway. I think that they can attack this weak Minnesota secondary. I, I really like their chances to pull an upset here. I, I don't know beyond that. I don't. I don't think they can do much. But I, I think the Vikings are really vulnerable right now. 
Yeah, the Giants were winning that game on Christmas Eve, 13 to 10, going into the fourth quarter. I somehow totally memory hold that. Um, and two, though, it's time to issue like kind of the first disclaimer of the show. Just because I'm saying like a team is the 12th best playoff team, they are a playoff team. Obviously, like most of these teams, there's a scenario where they can win. I feel more comfortable about a, a scenario where the Giants can win than either the Ravens or the Seahawks. I will say that, especially considering the opponent. I mean, the Vikings, who may or may not be fraudulent. The 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 Vikings a point differential. Okay, this this is a a team that won thirteen games this year. Point differential is minus three. Yeah, that that is true. I mean, literally historic, figuratively historic. Um, what? It's it's quite something. The, the Giants are minus five. You know, they're 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 right right alongside, and as far as point differential goes. Well, we love our expanded postseason, by the way. We're two teams with, even though these would have both been in under the old format, two teams with a negative point differential playing in the playoffs. If I if I could expand just a just a bit here, we have more. We have Dolphins negative uh, man, point man. differential. We have Bucks, Bucks, yeah, Bucks minus forty five, one of the lowest in the entire NFL. Uh, this yeah. be one of the lowest to ever make the playoffs. I think the Adam Gase Dolphins team that made the playoffs were like minus twenty or thirty. Yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, minus forty five. That is getting into really hard to do. Territory. I mean, the, the Chargers are you know just like a, a, a like a nose above uh, zero here. They have the seven seven uh, over in their point differential. Like it's it's a lot of teams that are not good. What is the Giants Vikings line right now? I say, and I'm praying that Adam inserts it into our chat. Um, you have the Vikings favored by three. Oh, three point favorites. That is that is indeed correct. In a game uh, with a 48 and a half total. Uh, so I, I don't think the Giants can win a shootout. I will say that. Um, if it verges into shootout territory, the Giants are requesting the under. They badly want the yeah, under. Yeah, for sure. So if we're rigging the postseason, the Giants are. They sent me an email like, can you get the under in there for our game? Thank you to the Giants. See what we can do. Denny, who is your next team as we rank the playoff-bound NFL teams? So where where are we now? We're at 11? I don't know, sort of. But, you know, since we're kind of mixed up, just say who your next team is. And then we'll My kind next of- team is the Chargers at 11. <laughs> because I do not believe that they are going to beat the Jaguars. In fact, I think that it might be a bloodbath. I think that wow. Jacksonville could dominate this game. I, I I would on say on NBC we need the game to be close. Uh, so and I yeah. but I you know you know you one thing that? I I love a blowout and I watch every I watch every second of it. I hope I hope America does too. I unfortunately watched every second of the sixty-five to seven college football national championship game drubbing. I will. Admit. I did not watch every second. I I had to tune out at fifty to seven or whatever it was. Yes, there you go. So you think the uh, Chargers are going to get annihilated, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean. Um, you have Joey Bosa dealing with an injury that he picked up in a meaningless week 18 game. You have Mike Williams dealing with a back injury. It's not serious, but we've seen Mike Williams miss games with not serious. Well, he injures his back like every other game he plays. Yeah, supposedly not serious. Can you land on a body part other than your back, Mike Williams? That's all uh, I ask. I like, know. God, please. There are can, other body parts you can land Can we on. get one pad? On Mike Williams' back, <laughs> please, please, just uh, just one little thing, like so that when he falls, it doesn't hurt so much. Not directly on a sternum. because because I I love watch Mike, watching Mike Williams play. He's he's a he's a fantastic player. I I I think he's one of the more exciting receivers in the entire league, and I never get to see him because he's always hurt. So he always um, lands on his back. Yeah, no, I I think I think the 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 Jags. First of all, home field, horrible environment for a very soft Chargers team. Let's just be honest. This is a soft team. Um, and and if, if Bosa doesn't play, Trevor Lawrence should have all the time in the world to operate there. I, I think Travis Etienne could ha- be in for a big day against a horrible Chargers uh, rush defense. So I, I do like the Jags. Well, let's say we don't know the injury stat. We're recording this on Tuesday. No, we, no. we have no idea what the injury status is for Joey Bosa and Michael. For all we know, they were just being – finally being cautious in week 18 after being so incautious for three yeah. quarters and playing them. So it's not like those key players have been ruled out. But yeah. The, uh, the bank, as it's known, the T I A A bank field in Jacksonville was rocking in week 18 against the Tennessee Titans. Yeah. I mean, we haven't, you didn't even, you didn't even riff on 
The Chargers are a West Coast team. They're making like one of the longest road trips in the entire country. Uh, right. I so I was gonna You're going to going literally there, but, coast to coast. But it's a, but it's at night, so they 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 they're not going to be sleepy. Yeah, that's a shame. You know, and and so if it were a one o'clock start, oh my goodness, the Jags would would do the thing they did to the Dolphins. You know, uh, so many years ago, like sixty two to seven. Sixty two seven in the division round against Dan yeah. Marino and Jimmy Johnson, two of the legends of the game. Right. We we don't like to talk about that, but but yeah, no, but it's a, it's at night, so they they'll they won't have sleep in their eyes. They'll be they'll be nice and awake. Unfortunately, we can't go with that uh, storyline. I wonder when they're going to travel out there. They should come out on like Thursday. Um, they should. Duval get, takes a few days to get used to. Duval's a special place. Get um, used to it. Yeah. Okay. So my next team, uh, it was the Dolphins, who we already talked about. Then my next team was the Jaguars. I have the Jaguars one spot behind the Chargers. Uh, that doesn't mean I think the Chargers are going to win this game. It's like, like just assessing the relative strength. I do think the Chargers are probably a better overall team, but I have them back to back. Vegas agrees. They think it's a pick them. Uh, the Jaguars, they just seem like a team like they got here a little too early. You know, like they were not ready for prime time against the Titans. Like even though they won that game, I mean, they needed everything in their arsenal to beat Josh Dobbs. And yeah, that was a huge coaching there's a huge coaching difference between Mike Vrabel and Brandon Staley. Mike Vrabel is one of the absolute best at like mucking up games and keeping them close when they yeah. shouldn't be. Right. Brandon Staley is one of the absolute worst and at playing very too frequently, they play down to their competition, but the Jags, it's just, there's still, there's nothing truly special about this Jags team to me. And, I mean, they, they, they are they're peaking at the right time. Well, at least they were before week 18 where they looked horrendous, I thought. You know, I, it's it's still it's a it's a very young team. You know, I, I think that they managed that week 18 game against the Titans as poorly as they possibly could. And they and they Doug Peterson, that. who is supposedly a sharp, uh, really liked first down runs. They the no, they yeah, they completely they they lucked out with a defensive touchdown. Congratulations to Jacksonville. Now you get to beat the Chargers at home uh, in the in the playoffs. I, the, the the Chargers. Uh, I'm just looking at stats. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out if there's any point in the season where the Chargers put up any fight against the run, and they did not. No. Okay. Like it doesn't matter how you parse it. First half of the season, second half, the last three weeks, the first three. It doesn't matter. I can't find it. The the Jaguars could run all over these guys, and and it seems like according to what how they operated last week against Tennessee, that's exactly what they would like to do. That is exactly what they would like to do, and yeah, I wouldn't be. I think on paper, the Chargers are still a better overall team. I agree with it being a pick em, though. And you've got me believing that the Jaguars are – the bank has just been known for years and years and years. Right. I believe this place used to be called Everbank Field. Man, we, we need a congressional law or something, man. Like, if you Listen, take any public funding, you're not selling the name rights to these stadiums. We must defend the bank. That's why we must. Uh, we always <laughs> defend the bank. Um, the bank must keep its money at all costs. That's right. And must never go to the people, as I say, in 1929. <laughs> and as they're massing outside my bank, uh, what worked, am I yeah. going to do, Mr. Potter? <laughs> <laughs> wasn't even that good, but uh, good. <laughs> I used to do a really good one. <laughs> People don't practice their Jimmy Stewart's that much anymore. No, no. I mean, you're the only one uh, under 40 years old who's ever heard of Jimmy. Real deal. Do you think, actually being serious, because uh, it's such a famous, do you think Kyle Dvorak knows who Jimmy Stewart is? No, no, no. You really don't? Nope. Man, man, that's dark. I came across a group of Zoomers who had never heard the word Motown. <sighs> wow, that's Motown. dark. Man, he, he's never heard of Jimmy Stewart, huh? Oh yeah, no way. It's an iconic American. Um, I mean, if it didn't happen in the last, you know, six to eight months, Zoomers don't know about it. It's on NBC every Christmas. This guy not watching NBC. This is actually very troubling. This is actually a problem. <laughs> I <laughs> I thought we were required. This is why I've been watching NBC nonstop for two years. Yeah, so, to recap so far, Denny's teams beginning at fourteen: the Dolphins, or excuse me, uh, yeah, the Dolphins, the Ravens, the Seahawks, the Chargers, the Jaguars. I've done the Ravens, the Seahawks, the Giants, the Dolphins, the Jaguars, the Chargers. Denny, what is your next team? Sorry, we're not really getting the numbers in there. Kind of That's all right. Uh, you know what? The people, people like it. Ja the Jags. I have 
I have the Jags uh, just just uh, ahead of the Chargers. Um, I, I think I've kind of laid out my case. For... Yeah. So who do you have after the Jaguars then? Uh, Vikings. Vikings. Then I have them low. I have them low. I don't believe. I do not believe uh, in in what the Vikings are doing. Um, their defense is just so exploitable in 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 several ways. I mean, they can be run on. They can be passed on. They they've tried to kind of reconfigure. Uh, their their coverage uh, schemes lately uh, to to not put their cornerbacks on islands uh, as they as they were for uh, much of the season and I guess that that has worked to an extent uh, but I, I think that they they can and they will be burned I, I just don't know if they can continue just pouring on points week after week um, uh, and and even at home. I, I doubt that they will beat the Giants. I like the Giants. I think that I do think the Vikings will win this game. And everything you said about their defense is correct. But I mean, is, if Darius Slayton burns them, there's a 50 50, 50 50 chance he even catches the ball. Like Richie James and Isaiah Hodgins, like it's a it's a matter of like the Giants' strengths do not match up with the Vikings' weaknesses. Yeah, like they just don't right. have the personnel to take you apart down the field. And as we, Highlight earlier, so like Daniel Jones doesn't ever want to even do that. Um, and so the Giants, I think it's just going to have to be like a rock fight type of game for the Giants. To win. I completely agree, though, that the Vikings are just horribly vulnerable. I mean, they they struggled to put away the, I mean, I guess they pulled Kirk Cousins, but they struggled to put away the Nathan Peterman Bears. They did. And, I, and, I was actually wondering if they were going to blow that game at one, at one point because, uh, and they were trying to win. But but they they took they took cousins out and I'm like uh, I don't I don't know if you have this game locked up guys like uh, I mean and the Bears were starting guys who had not played one snap all season and they were able to hang with the Vikings for three quarters. Yeah, the, the Bears put a business decision secondary out there like they put the like we're getting the number one pick secondary out there and yeah Kirk Cousins who just utterly annihilated in Week 17 by the Packers. And so, so the two best teams the Vikings played the final five weeks, the, the Lions, the Colts, the Giants, the Bears, and the Packers, the two best teams they played, the Lions and the Packers, double-digit losses in both those games. And of course, the infamous falling behind 33 to nothing at home to Jeff Saturday in the Indianapolis Colts. Um, yeah, I, it's hard to believe in the Vikings, but they're at home. They have a really good home field advantage, actually, the Vikings. And I just don't think the Giants, even though they almost won that game on Christmas Eve, I just don't think the Giants have the personnel to pull this off. Yeah, and like no. the Vikings, I, I think it's going to come down to the Vikings' star power. Is really what I think. Um, I mean, I, for for hopefully for them it does, because otherwise I, I don't I don't know if they if they win. I, I do have the Giants next, so I have the Giants at what, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. You 9, need to eight. Number. It's very confusing. Eight, so. eight for the Giants. I, you know, I uh, j- just for you know, it's not exactly analytics here, but I do, I do think there's something to uh, the, the, you know, fiery head coach, a team that believes in itself and sees itself as, as a, as an underdog. Um, players trying to prove themselves, including Daniel Jones and, and Saquon Barkley. Uh, you and, lost uh, me at Daniel Jones trying to prove himself. I feel like that'll go poorly. Well, I mean, he's played he's played pretty well of uh, yes. of late of late, and he's been willing to take off and 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 run. Uh, the Vikings have been pretty vulnerable against rushing quarterbacks this year. Uh, I I just I think that uh, this team has a lot going for it. They were able to rest their guys last week. I I don't know. I I think the Vi- I think the Giants are dark horses. To win, not one, but two Ooh, playoff my, games. My lordy! And right. for a man who supposedly doesn't watch the game, you sure sound under the spell of Brian Dable. I I am to- totally under the spell. Yes, I I admit to it. My eighth best playoff team. I have it. I mean, I take absolutely no pleasure in saying this, but uh, it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, it's a it's going to happen. We all know they're not nearly as good as the Dallas Cowboys. We all know like there's no point in even playing the game that the Bucks will win this game. Cowboys are only two and a half point favorites despite having four more victories. And the Bucks, everything about them is bad on paper on offense at least. Uh where they they have the 25th best point differential in the entire NFL, 25th in points per game, 20th in offensive EPA. This is with the, the greatest player in league history as the trigger man. Um, but 
they they turned it on at the exact right time in week 17. They do. I just say like they have the defense is still pretty good. Basically top 10, a top 10 adjacent in almost every EPA category and almost every just straight up category. You don't even need to cite EPA. Really, really good run defense still. Pass defense stabilized. They had some injuries, but pretty solid overall defense. And like they've got the star power, uh, yeah. I don't, they, they're, they're a dangerous team. I, I mean, maybe I'm stuck in the past. I think the Bucks are still just a dangerous team. Well, look, I I think Brady has gotten to the point. I think we we saw this against the Panthers two weeks ago, where he's he has said to his coaches, including Byron Leftwich, the offensive coordinator, enough, enough. Yeah. We're not we're not doing this thing where we're gonna establish it. And we're not going to use play action unless we establish it. And we're going to run it on first down. We're going to run it on second down. We're not doing that anymore. We're going to do what got us to the Super Bowl two years ago and what nearly got us to the Super Bowl last year. Like you, 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 they're reverting back to what works and they still have that personnel. I, I, I do, I do like their chances. Unfor- I hate it. I hate I it. it they're they're going to it. get in, they're going to sneak into the playoffs in the worst division in history and they're going to win th- to at least two games. I will say it will be a road game, even though it's in Tampa. That place will be taken over by Cowboys fans. Well, there are no Bucks fans. Come on. I mean, come on. I mean, it, you didn't have to say it out loud, but um, <laughs> it's too it's too nice. It's sunny. Who who has time for football? There are, truly there are no Chargers fans, as we know. No offense. Uh, Again, there are almost as few LA is beautiful. Fans. Okay, they're too. There's mm-hmm. too. It's too nice. You have to live in a miserable, cold, dirty East Coast or Midwest <laughs> town. To actually enjoy football and go out and sport. man, come on, man, that's where I live. I said well, East Coast or yeah, you did say okay, you did say the, East, the, Coast. the East Coast is, <laughs> is, is unlivable for for seven months out of the year. It's true. Uh, but with the with the Bucks, you that's not just like noise. Like during the Fox broadcast in Week 17, where they were playing the Panthers, this is something the announcers kept bringing up. Was that week in practice? Even, apparently, Todd Bowles was even in agreement. Like. We're not doing the conservative stuff anymore. Yeah. And this was a narrative that they kept talking about the whole game. Like this is what they were telling like the Fox booth. Like they were going to come out like slinging it. Basically this was against a Panthers team that was missing JC Horn. And then for very mysterious reasons, kept singling up Mike Evans, even though he kept just running right by their very bad corners. This, I mean, literally just running right by CJ Henderson. And I think someone named like Keith Taylor or something mm-hmm. like he, it, Mike Mike Evans maybe lost a step or two, but he was I mean, in the true definition. He was like, all right, just go run by that guy, I guess, and he would, and they would throw to him, and he actually caught it, except for the first yeah. one, which he dropped. Just, just just to put some data behind it, uh, the Bucks over their past over the past, last last four weeks of the regular season before obviously before week week eighteen, we're not going to count that. Uh, week fourteen, nine percent over their expected pass rate. Week fifteen, five percent over the next week. 2% over, and then week 17 against Carolina, 10% over their expected pass rate. The, the, these are the numbers. This is the way that the 2020 Bucks and 2021 Bucks operated on offense. I think they're getting back to it. And uh, uh, again, against the Cowboys, who I believe just got picked apart by Sam Howell in his first start, I, I think Brady could go b- ballistic here. Well, it's weird. The Cowboys have some weird stuff going on because, in theory, if you're the Bucks, and you got you know your banged up offensive line all year. Like this is not a team where you want to go back passing every snap. Like where that yeah. pass rush might just devour their offense alive. Right. But like Sam Howe picked them apart. Like you said, Gardner Minshew picked them apart. Yes. I mean, yes. Josh Dobbs looked usable against them. Um, I mean, didn't Trevor Lawrence go kind of nuts against the Cowboys too? Uh, he did. Uh, they've really sprung some passing game vulnerabilities. Uh, like if they revert to their their peak form this year, like it's gonna be actually bad news for Tom Brady. I feel like if he's dropping back forty or forty five times, but but I don't I don't know what's going on with the Cowboys defense. It has not been the same. I think Davis Mills I, I had a good game against the Cowboys. Is this real? It is. It is real. Yeah, yeah no, okay. it is actually real. Yeah, no, okay. The Texans almost won that game, but Davis Mills didn't really. Uh, go off as you hear me clicking going in box scores no no it's it, it it is i mean it's worth it's worth pointing out they they have no one on the other side of digs um no you know and 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 with evans and godwin and uh, whoever else whether it's russell gage or, or julio jones 
I know that Julio is not exactly, you know, the dominant Julio, but he's still, he's out there, folks. He's out there. Um, he, he's made a few big plays. He's actually, he, he's run by some dudes this year. I have right. seen him run by some dudes. So you have D- Dallas is actually, uh, has given up the, the ninth highest drop back EPA since week 13. Um, it's a problem, man. And I, that's why I have the bucks, uh, ranked above the Cowboys. It's a real deal. Like we're trying to strip, strip away all artifice, all bits, all irony. Who do you think is going to win the Cowboys bucks game? Bucks. I do think it's going to be the bucks and it's a shame that the Cowboys one to 53 are just a far, far better roster, but it does just seem like this is setting up for Cowboys hell. But what's going on with Dak Prescott, by the way, man? Uh, he was uh, truly, truly miserable. In he's been, he's been atrocious in several times down the stretch. Uh, I, there, there seems to be like a complete lack of communication between him and pass catchers not named CeeDee Lamb. He seems to be on the same page with Lamb. Okay, so that's good. He, Finally, that, it, only, it only took three years. But, they, yeah. they have that going for him. Other than that, I mean, he he's throwing it to spots where his his players just just watch it whistle by. <laughs> oh, there it goes. <laughs> Didn't know why are you throwing it there? I'm here, and and then and then he starts with the typical quarterback pointing. Hey, well, you're supposed to be there, and there's no and they and then they talk it over. Well, we need to do this and this, and they come out and they do the same thing. Yeah. Dak Prescott before his pick six against Washington almost threw a pick six that on is, the same kind of pass. Right. That was iconic. You that know, was amazing. Uh, yeah, I forgot. He threw a pick six against the Commanders. Man, what is going on with this team? A bad one. A bad like one one that when he threw it, you said, "Oh, well, that's it." You just knew it. So recapping for me, through fourteen, I have the Ravens as the worst team in the field. Then the Seahawks. Then the Giants. Then the Dolphins. The Jaguars. The Chargers. The yep. Bucks. Denny, you had uh, the Dolphins, Ravens, Seahawks, Chargers, Jaguars, Vikings, Giants. Who's your next? Oh, then you had the Cowboys and the Bucks. I guess we should just skip it. Yeah, Cowboys, Bucks. Uh, I, do, I don't think Cowboys are going to get through here, oh. and uh, it's going to be the same hellish result as every other. So now Cowboys we're to we're our top five now. Yeah. Um, uh, who's your Cowboys, fifth best Bucks. team in the playoff field? I have uh, I have the Bengals as the fifth best. And, and this is really I do as well. I do as well. It's hard. Yeah. The top five, the top five, it's a deep top five. I think any of the top five teams can win the Super Bowl. Yeah, I, did, I, I couldn't. I couldn't put them above the Bills. We'll get to the other others in a in a minute. Actually, can we just re- can we just read our top five? No, 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 no. We're gonna go. Okay. I actually don't think we should. All right. Um, I mean, I don't know. We need the, a little drama. So the yeah, I mean, I I do think the Bengals are a little bit one dimensional in that if you you know play two safeties over the top and uh, limit them to dinking and dunking. Where is Congress on this? You you can you but they are silent uh they they they, they will not move on it the the two the two deep safety uh you know uh what is it industrial complex well this is real the southern block is blocking it yeah um, um, <laughs> and right. yeah i mean and and so they they can't really run the ball uh thinking and dunking you know could kind of stall their offense obviously i think that they're going to beat up on the ravens but beyond that i i just i i don't i don't think that they can go toe to toe with the elite teams in the AFC. I actually think they can just for a few reasons. I mean, they still have some offensive line vulnerabilities. They lost Lyle Collins for the season. Uh, They're going to be playing some really, really good defenses in the AFC playoffs. But I mean, playmakers, obviously uh, they have those in spades. They're actually very healthy too. Finally, after season of like kind of questionable health that kind of everyone t higgins missed time jamar chase obviously missed time joe mixon missed a little time um but they have the kind of offense so they can't they can run the ball if they need to they have like a multi-dimensional offense they have playmakers they have like instant offense capability both in joe burrow and his receivers like guys mm-hmm. who can like make plays like it can be third and 17 and joe burrow can like maybe get a completion you know like so it's not like a Jared Goff type situation where you're like, well, or Geno Smith where you're like, oh, third and 17. It's, uh, it's we're going to enjoy this punt and hopefully not this pick. Um, right. And then on defense, Lou, how do you, I forgot, how do you pronounce Lou Anarumos? Is this Lou Anarumo? Is that how you say his name? Um, yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah. He was put on just an absolute clinic last postseason in terms of second half scheming. Really the same thing this year. The defense just so well schemed for the Bengals. A really bizarre, this is a totally pointless tangent. The Bengals defense was so good most of the year 
but just really bad in fantasy. They like, didn't score like any fantasy points. I know. <laughs> it was actually really, really weird. But they were one of the better real life defenses, not like an elite. They were like a top 10 or 12 defense, but were just never that way in fantasy. It was very bizarre. But such a well coached defense, a pretty good overall defense, too. Top 10 against the pass, seventh and drop back EPA. Um, I do think they have all the ingredients, like, to do basically what they did last year, kind of play spoiler against the bigger teams and reach the Super I think the Bengals can reach the Super Bowl. I have them as my fifth best team in the field as well. I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, I do have them, obviously, in the top five. Are we ready for number four? We're ready for number four. I had the Bills. Uh, and I felt – Too low. I felt, yeah, I don't know, man. They they haven't they haven't played well in a while. I mean it's it's been a, it's been a little bit that that offense is not clicking. Um, it's, no, a, it's, it's a lot a lot of uh, improvising for Josh Allen, and I, he does it well. And part of the you know allure of the offense and the the potency of that offense is his ability to get outside of play structure and 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 make make big plays. I get that both on it both with his legs and 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 downfield. I understand that. But there's so much of that. There's too much of that right now, and I don't know if it's sustainable once you once you get you know deeper into the postseason against really good teams. I don't know if, if every play being a hair on fire Josh Allen play can can work. I mean he's you know he's had problems with turnovers over the past four or five weeks. I think that that continues against good defenses in the postseason. Three picks over his past two starts, one of which was a destruction of the Bears. And yeah, they would have been in pretty big trouble against the Patriots had they not returned two kickoffs for touchdowns. Yes, that's a good point. And and the I mean the Patriots secondary is actually pretty good, but it's it's still I think it's a it's a concern that it, this Bills offense was a well oiled machine last year. You can't say that right now. Man, what happened to the Patriots special teams? Uh, I, don't, I don't know why I'm digressing on this, but like, it's a tough. I thought about this the other day. It's a tough way for Matthew Slater to end his end his career. It's just Bill Belichick. The like, this seems like the class. I mean, Bill Belichick. Is glad you ask him special teams is like the only thing that like, gets him to light up in know? in life. Yeah, besides other teams, good players where we've talked about where he loves. But only on that. special teams, Pat. That's true. <laughs> like, to see a Patriots team. I mean, the Patriots honestly would have won 11 games with a league average special teams unit. They, wow. they single-handedly lost two or three games because of special teams. I've That's never seen anything quite like it. Never uh, from a Bill Belichick-led te- team either. I have the Bills as my number one team. I'll just be honest. Um, probably because I've been pot committed. I've been telling people since, like, April that the Bills were going to win the Super Bowl. And I just think even though this is the top five, everyone still has vulnerabilities where the chiefs, I question if they truly have enough playmakers and I question if their defense, it's been the top half of the league all year. It's a perfectly good defense. It's not like a shutdown postseason defense. The 49ers are starting Brock Purdy. Uh, I just think that's a vulnerability. I'm in, inadvertently revealing my top five here. Uh, <laughs> the Eagles, this, the Eagles were kind of looking like a Death Star until Jalen Hurts got hurt. Now, they're just kind of out of rhythm, though. I'm like really out of rhythm. And hopefully for their sake, they can get back in rhythm. But they were, they were getting pretty banged up, too. I just think – They were. The, I still think the Bills have the fewest question marks. And we say, like, they can't survive with, like, the Josh Allen. They've basically survived two entire seasons now on Josh Allen God mode including last postseason where he went God mode from the opening snap against the Patriots and continued that way through the overtime loss to the Chiefs. Yeah. Like, it doesn't seem sustainable on paper, but in practice it continues to be sustainable somehow. And I, I, the Bills are my Super Bowl favorite still. Uh, yeah, I I just I, – I think that they're, they're a little too out of sync on offense to, to – for me to do that but they would have uh, been well served to get the buy it's really a shame as we know for so many reasons that they didn't get that shot at the number one seed and getting to play a afc championship game in ralph wilson stadium i have no idea what it's called now would have been quite an advantage it's called um, the bank i believe yeah i'm sure it's just called the bank um so but i'm still a bills lever though yeah the bills play at a stadium called the fed what let's uh, let's look this up. What I think it's Highmark Stadium. Yeah. Uh, what the hell is so, that? Ooh, I man. actually uh just real quick, just I know we're talking about Josh Allen forever, but every team, every defense against the league's best offenses, uh passing offenses plays two deep safeties exclusively almost, right? Josh Allen, unlike Patrick Mahomes, unlike Burrow, unlike even Justin Herbert, 
is not patient with that stuff. Like he refuses to play that game. And yeah, sometimes it works out and it's really exciting uh, and, and, and really beneficial for Buffalo. But the, I, I do think that teams can bait him into making those throws by being like, uh, uh-uh, we are not, we are not, not doing this, playing this game. We're, we're playing way off the line. You're not going over the top. And Josh Allen says, I don't care. I'm doing it anyway. It's true. But also then it exposes them to humongous Josh Allen runs, which he has continued. To yeah, do. sure. Sure. And so it's, it is like an interesting game of chicken, a game of game theory uh, with that look and Josh Allen, where I, your, your concerns about the bills are about their defense too. Isn't like quite, it's still pretty good via EPA, via DVOA, via actual stats that people understand. <laughs> um, it's still a good defense, but mm-hmm. I, I think it is dropped off. The 2021 defense was dropped off from the 2020 defense. And I feel like the 2022 defense is dropped off a bit from the 2021 defense. So there are vulnerabilities for the bills, but I, I still, I'll take their questions over any other team's questions. Uh, so the Bills are your fourth best team. They're my first. Who is your third best team in the playoff field? Uh, Niners. And I guess this Same makes for me. me. A, yeah, I guess this makes me a Brock Purdy truther. I mean, I do think obviously there are major questions, but getting back to point differential for a moment, I know that Brock Purdy only started five games, uh, but for the season, the Niners lead the league in point differential. They're plus one seventy-three. They which Man. is a lot. Um, I mean, you look at look at their opponent point per game, uh, sixteen. You know, I mean, the teams are just not scoring. I this is, I I, I think the Seahawks offense could be eaten alive this week uh, against against these Niners. Um, they don't allow big plays. You know, unless it's AJ Green down the sideline, they do not yeah, allow. That was bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been more tilted over play in my yeah, life. That was that. really, really bizarre. Um, and uh, uh, they, they they pressure the passer. Like the the thing is, and we've talked about this with with Purdy. He doesn't have to do much, and that and that's the beauty of this the Shanahan system when it's working. And sometimes it does not work, but when it's working, no. when it doesn't work, it's unwatchable. Right. When it doesn't work, it's a complete debacle. It's like Nick Mullins in 2020, whatever it was. Right? Ugh, yeah. But but Nick Mullins is Brock Purdy. They're the same guy, you know. And and uh, Nick, if Nick Mullins were the quarterback right now and the team outside, you know, the, the offensive line, the defense, everybody's playing the same way, it's the same result. So, in other words, I don't care about Brock Purdy. What I'm saying is this team overall is so good that I ha- I had to put them in the top three. Me too. They're my highest ranked NFC team ahead of the Eagles. And the defense speaks for itself. It's number one by any conventional or advanced metric. And the offense, I mean, Brock Purdy, I feel like is overdue for like a, a, an exposure game at some point. But the problem is he has the best play calling in the league. And then, then it, it's the best play calling to maybe the best stable of overall playmakers in all of football. Like, when you have Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, and now returning Debo Samuel to say nothing of Brandon Ayuk, it's almost like as long as the dude can complete a throw, like any throw, like it doesn't matter where, like someone's going to make a play. And their only weakness is a seventh round rookie quarterback. It is a big weakness. Yeah, right. It hasn't been yet, though. And everything else, there's almost just no other weaknesses on the entire team. Um, no, no. And, and, and uh, this is a, they're just getting to the first round here. The Niners are playing a Seahawks uh, defense that has been bullied on the ground uh, of late. And we know what Kyle Shanahan likes to do to those sort of defenses. And actually, if I could just, you know, dive into real, not dive into, but just touch on DFS for this week. It makes Elijah Mitchell very interesting. this week. Man. Oh man. That's how they lose, man. I'm telling you, if they get too cute, and like have a real Seahawks specific game plan. That's how they lose. I feel like no. I but I I th- I would I was thinking that Mitchell would would come in when they're up three scores. And, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Go okay. for 150 yards. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> I thought you were gonna be like, hey, come out and just, he's pounding the rock. No, you know, no, 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 not like that. But Pete Carroll would probably be like you know, Monopoly man. Like yes, please. <laughs> uh, monocle Pete Carroll right. would really love to be attacked to Liza. At least maybe he would until the opening drive where he has 10 carries for like 82 yards and a touchdown. And then, and then um, he would not want to be around anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, you would not. Sorry, I've been congested for six weeks. So don't make me laugh. But, uh, that, that's been yeah. six since t- yeah. 2020. <laughs> you, would, you would not want to be around <laughs> if that happened. Uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, I, forget, I lost my train of thought. Oh, I was going to yeah. make another Seahawks or 49ers comment, but uh, I think well, you put a bow on it. So why, I mean, why do we think the 49ers are more dangerous than the Eagles? Because I have the Eagles as my fourth best team. Do you have the Eagles as your second, though? I have them as my first. Ooh, shoot, I made the reveal. So, okay, give yeah. me your ego spiel. Why are they your Super Bowl favorite then, Denny? I, the, this, because this offense is uh, so dedicated to scoring points, to maximizing points, and by that I don't mean just throwing. I mean using – Jalen Hurts as a rusher, hopefully. They do you anything at their disposal. You're absolutely correct. Yeah, using Miles Sanders, whatever. They have a good offensive line. If you if you're weak in the back end and coverage, you they will roast you with Devontae Smith and uh, AJ Brown and Dallas Goddard. Okay, so they can do whatever they want to do, and it doesn't have to unfold a certain way. This is this is the way you know. When I think through these games, I think, well, if Team X does this, then Team Y can't respond. You know, it's not that's not the case with the Eagles pretty much ever. And I know that last week wasn't great against the Giants. And I get that. I think there was some rust with Jalen Hurts coming back. I think there was also some hesitancy to use him fully as a as a as the weapon he has been. Um, but I, I don't know. I, just, I, I think the Eagles are uh, I you call them the Death Star. I think they can get back to that Death Star mode. Yeah, they they were they were the most imposing team in the league before Jalen Hurts got injured. And. They talk about a team that has really, really needed the buy. They're very lucky. I mean, lucky is not the right word. They're very fortunate that yeah. they did secure the buy. Because I agree, J- Jalen Hurts was not unleashed in Week 18. I mean, understandably so. They, they talk about a business trip. Just get in and get it. whatever. Just beat Davis Webb. I don't care that, how you do it. That was Gotta it. Just beat Davis Webb. Uh, but they can't. They have to have normal Jalen Hurts. That's just. That is like the deal breaker. They didn't have normal Jalen Hurts against the Bucks last year and were horrible in the wild card round. Just absolutely horrible. Like one of the worst performances in the playoffs in the past few years. Um, it was terrible, yeah. yeah. The, the, on, on offense, yeah, when they're healthy, I mean, they're, they're, they are so imposing with their offensive line, with their skill player weapons, with their even their just conventional running game. Even when Miles Sanders is like just running into people, Boston Scott and Kenneth Gainwell – are still good. I mean, the Eagles are unstoppable inside the 10 yard line. They like, are. Like, they actually are. <laughs> like once they get inside the 10, sorry. Like you just, you're giving up a touchdown. You just have your defensive players just stand up and let the guy, let them get in there because you're just going to waste time trying to defend it. They, they cannot be stopped. That's why Jake Elliott was so horrible in fantasy. Yes. I, I, di- I didn't understand all year. Yes. Like, this is one of the most explosive, highest scoring. Why is Jake Elliott every week? I look, he's 28th in fantasy points. Right. Game. So I actually have, unfortunately a metric to, to measure how uh how many opportunities how many kicks uh kickers should have okay and jake elliott from week one on was at the very very bottom uh of of uh not of a expected attempt expected attempts he was near the top but actual attempts he was he was near the bottom because the eagles are not concerned with kicking field goals in the red zone they're not. And so the Eagles got a lot of players back on defense. They got Dallas Goddard back a few weeks ago. Obviously, Jalen Hurts. Hopefully, the bye week, they get truly healthy, and we can see the fully operational Eagles battle station in the divisional round. So that may, the only team we haven't talked about, Denny, is the Kansas City Chiefs. We apparently both have them ranked number two. So my most imposing team was the Bills. Yours was the Eagles. Why do we both have the Chiefs number two? I mean, the, the fact that they – Lost Tyreek Hill and it didn't matter. I think speaks to both. Didn't matter in the regular season. I think it I'll speaks to that. both Pat, Patrick Mahomes' unbelievable play and Andy Reid's system, you know, and ability to generate yarding yardage and points um, in any way that he can, that they can. And you know, gone are the days where it was just Mahomes over the top to his to either Hill or, or another deep threat, whoever that was at the time. Uh, I guess only Hill, really. Uh, it, you know, but it, and that doesn't matter. They found ways uh, to, to get by. They, they lead the league in EPA per pass attempt. Um, they lead the league in the rate of uh, positive uh, pass plays. Uh, just, just unbelievable. They were the efficiency. highest scoring team in the league. Right. Unbelievable efficiency. 
a defense that can hold its own mostly, but really, even if when the defense falters, uh, that that offense can pick up the slack. So I, I it, it's it's just it's hard to make a, an argument against Kansas City. Honestly, it is, but so like they can. I feel like in the flow of the regular season, they're just going to pick teams apart. Like their vulnerabilities don't show up quite as much, but you can't call it a bend but don't break defense. It's better than that, but it's not like an elite defense. It's not a defense like this full of playmakers. And then they never, they never did have that second playmaker emerge beyond Travis Kelsey. And no, it's like any any team that plays in the division round, they're going to sell out to stop Travis Kelsey. And one of Juju Smith Schuster, Marquez Valdez Scaling, I guess Kadarius Tony could, is, could be a hashtag dat dude. Is I mean, I didn't want to say that, but we're forced to say, uh, or him. What what is it now? Him. Right. He he uh, is him. He is him. Maybe. I believe, um, I believe that that's but, that's what his teens are saying. I, I feel like it's like if the Chiefs like get behind, say against the Bills or the Bengals, uh, they might. I don't know. I mean, they have Patrick Mahomes, though, man. Like, it's really tough. He's, yeah. He's the best uh, football player on the planet. There is no close second. Um, no offense to Josh Allen. I really think there's no close second to Patrick Mahomes. And but. listen, if, if the Chiefs do that spinny huddle thing <sighs> over and over again in the postseason, uh, opponents have no chance. Just just call it in. Chiefs Super Bowl. Yeah, just call it in. But – I, I I don't I do I don't think this is as good as the Chiefs teams have been the past three years. I will say that I, I don't think it's quite peak Chiefs, despite because the scheme is so good and Mahomes is so good that as long as the roster is good, they're just going to cruise through the regular season no matter what. Uh, but I, I don't think it's their best fifty-three man roster in several years. No, I, I agree and, with that. And I just don't who the second playmaker is. This question always vexes me, but I guess it, it just always vexes me with the Chiefs because like Jarek McKinnon. Like, sorry, but like, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work in the playoffs. Um, I'm, I'm saying you're hearing it here first. Ah, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, the guy's like Jamal Charles Light at this point. And then they're gonna have to play the AFC Championship game, like in Ford Field or something. Um, oh yeah, right. Um, uh, really weird. But the Chiefs, we both have them in the top two. So by consensus, we think the Chiefs are the most dangerous team. And they're playoffs. good, is what I say. They're pretty good. And it's because they have Patrick Mahomes. And this podcast, it's because it has Patrick Darty. Uh, it's over question mark. Uh, got a segue. Uh, somehow I have to transition somehow to the end of the show. Uh, Denny, you have a special article coming up this week and every week of the playoffs. Tell the people about it. Yeah. Uh, Thursday morning, I will have a breakdown, uh, DFS centric breakdown of all six games. Uh, this, this weekend, uh, there are several slates that you could play either Saturday only Sunday only. We, we now have a Monday playoff game for some reason <laughs> and uh we don't we don't know why uh but it, it, it i it, it's it's fun short slates to me are fun i'm gonna break it down for you it's a really really good stuff i read everyone last year you should too you. it's gonna be a lot of stuff on the website we have injury questions heading into the playoffs. we have a lot of other articles too i might post an article but i can't say what it is because i might not actually do it you never know um if it's not good enough but we also have a preview show on thursday with myself patrick crane kyle Dvorak, denny carter Pat Crane. I mean, that's if Pat shows up. I mean, we're going to talk about the Monocle Man, the Monopoly <laughs> Man. Um, yeah, it, his ego's already just monstrous. It's pretty bad. Um, Pat will never phone it in. No, he, but his ego's just monstrous now. I, I Frankly, I'm not sure if we're still friends. but uh, I'm scared. He'll be here Thursday. Well, I'll be here Thursday. Thank you so much for listening. For Denny, I'm Pat. We'll be back later in the week. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotorworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.